Hi guys, I'm here in Bristol with Brian of Daughtry. Um, Hello. <laughs> we're here to talk about some PRS guitars, as you well know. So, how do you go about choosing what guitars you bring on the road? Do you kind of have one rig that you use back home, one rig you bring here, or are you selective about what you use for each tour? Okay, so how, um, how the gear gets split up into rigs, it pretty, pretty much works like this. There's the A rig, which is the main, the main rig. That's the one I pri use primarily. So, in that rig right now, we have, um, the, in the A rig, we have the PRS Silver Sky, um, which is nice. amazing, and there we've we go. got <laughs> heard, it heard it here. You heard it here, uh, and then we've got a Mira X, which okay. I actually just put the fifty nine oh nine pickups in. Nice man, that thing sounds in. I mean, it already sounded great, but yeah. those fifty nine oh nines, oh, it's so so good, so good, so How good. How do you find the Mira X compares to the regular one? We obviously you've got a couple. Of I'll be honest tonight. with you, as far as feel goes, yeah. it feels pretty good and pretty similar to me. To, okay. Uh, compared to my okay. uh, regular mirrors. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, it kind of just fell in place on this, uh, at the beginning of the Cage to Rattle tour, the okay. Mira X felt, just fell in, and I liked it. I don't know, it was just one of those things. It just good worked out. To yeah, yeah. It was a good accident to happen. Um, so we have the, the Silver Sky, the Mira X with the 5909s. We have my... Burt Reynolds mirror. I don't know if you've heard about that one. No. Okay, so um, as, we all know the story. Hendrix burned the Strat at the Monterey Pop Festival. Um, I was always intrigued with that. So okay. I, I was always very intrigued with that guitar. And I remember some years back, uh, I think it's probably been about 10 years probably now, uh, I contacted my PRS rep at the time, Wynn. Yeah. Uh, Wynn's an awesome dude, and um, I told him my idea, and he was like, let's do it. Let's make this happen. Okay. So a couple days later, the Mira came in, this said Mira came in, the one I call Burnt Reynolds, Yeah. and um, long story short, I took a plumber's torch. I took all the hardware off, but I took a plumber's torch, okay. and I just torched the thing, man, and made it look Welcome exactly... I made it look very rock <laughs> yeah. and roll. That's exactly what I did. And um, long story short, after I was done and got it looking the way I wanted to, yep. um, we took it, put it back in the case um, with all the hardware, sent it back to PRS. They dipped it in polyurethane for me. It locked in all that like really nice. cool yep. char, all the stuff that looks so neat on it. It locked it in, and that is my that's my backup mirror now in the A rig. Nice. So in that rig, basically our guitars are. There's, I wish I had that here to show you, by the way. Yeah. It's such an amazing guitar. We'll have to find some pictures. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can something. make sure you get some of those. Nice. I know a guy. Cool. I know a guy. Um, so, long story short, we have five guitars in the A-Rig right now. Yep. Um, it's pretty much divided into three guitars are set up for E tuning, mm -hmm. and then th the other two are set up for an E flat tuning. Right. Bas basically, that accommodates the older Daughtry material. Yep. Okay. It's not over, it's home, feels yep. like tonight. All that stuff was in an E flat tuning. And yep. then the E standard stuff, that's pretty much anything from the past two records, okay. uh, Baptized and Cage to Rattle is mm -hmm. all in E. Um, Chris stopped writing an E flat for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like know. Pushing himself, I guess, <laughs> yeah. maybe. No, I mean, I think he, I think he found that his voice resonated. You yeah, know, fair enough. You know, in that uh, playing in those tunings. So not that it ever struggled before, but <laughs> no, he definitely no. He's such an awesome, awesome singer. I, I feel very uh, privileged to share the stage with that guy and record with him in the studio. So I'm not trying to kiss his butt right now, but it's the truth. Um, but anyway, so that Mira. Um, we use that, and then we also, let's see, what else do we have in the A-Rig? We use the 245, mm -hmm. we have that in there, the Cherry Burst, yep. which is, that's kind of my go-to for the older, the older Daughtry stuff. Yep. And then, uh, what do we have as the backup to that? We have a back, oh, we have a Silver 250 that nice. is the backup to that. Okay. Um, the, I love the scale of the 245. It feels yeah. it feels good to me. But okay. the 250 sounds amazing, and it's yeah. it looks really cool. It's it's all silver. It's all, the, I mean, the whole thing is silver. It's They're amazing. Unique. I love silver. I love gold too, actually. So I love I love just sparkly sparkly guitars. I'm a sucker. Cool. Um, but yeah, so we got 250, 245, Silver Sky, 
Um, and then I have my regular mirror. That's the only one we didn't touch yep. on. I have my regular mirror, the one that is identical to the charred one, except yep. not, not. We have not before, the before and after. Yeah. Maybe that would have been a better name. He'll, you be before, the you be after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the, but that one's in the E tuning as well. Okay. I find the mirrors respond very, very well in the E standard tuning. Okay. Um, as far as intonation all the way up the neck, it's, it, it rings true. So oh. um, back to your original question, how do we decide our rig? It's all based on what we have found to work in the A rig. So in this rig, we, it's a duplicate, basically. So okay. we've, got, we've got another Mira. This is in the E. This is in the E tuning. Yeah, this we is use, one of the, the older U.S. made ones. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then we basically have an identical one just over here that we use as its redundant backup. <laughs> Let's have a look. And the twin. Yeah, it is a, literally a twin. The only difference between the A-Rig and this one is A, the color of the, the mirrors is different, yeah. and B, I didn't set one of these on fire. <laughs> Small differences. Maybe I should, though. Mm, You've got to have your before and after, haven't you? <laughs> you seem hesitant. Um, but so, yeah, I do. I love the mirrors. I love... Uh, they have a little bit of like... Um, as far as like how they feel when you're playing them, they have a little bit of like a SG kind of yeah. thing going on. You know? goes around I don't know if that was on purpose or not from their standpoint, mm, but either probably. way, I like it. I like it. I feel yeah. very Angus yeah. when yeah, I'm rocking it. Yeah, got a bit it. of a familiar <laughs> feel because of that kind of old school totally, vibe to them. Totally, totally. Nice. What else are we looking at on so, B rig then? So this That's would be. Don't we? These are our um, E flat tuned guitars. Okay. Um, as I was saying to you in our private conversation earlier, this was one of the original PRSs that that I got from them. Um, Good place to start. Yeah, I mean, I started with... I've, I've been playing PRS probably for... I'm going to just take a guess around 25 years or something like that. And it's funny, yeah. my original PRS I got because I traded in a Jackson at a... I, you know, I was, you know... Okay. I was a little metalhead kid, very yeah. obsessed with Dave Mustaine, and yeah, I, and Dave the, Mustaine the, played a Jackson. The it? hair we discussed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, I I had this Jackson. I traded it for um, a PRS, mm -hmm. and I fell in love instantly with it. And okay. so I had that, and then I would, I just kept trading up for a better PRS. Finally, I ended up with a gold um, standard. And that actually, I did the audition for Daughtry with that. So oh, I don't have it out with me anymore. I took yeah. it back home. So it has a little bit of sentimental value. That's a keeper. Um, but I do, I still use it at home in my cat room studio. I don't know if you follow me online or anything, but I run a recording yeah, studio yeah. as well. So um, anyway, so yeah, I have the single cut. I use this. This is my E flat guitar, uh, Tobacco Burst. Yep. Very classic look. Yeah. You know, don't you think? Let's go on you. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't that think may have looked a little cheesy. I don't think they can look bad on anyone. They're great. No, this is a this is a really really awesome guitar, man. And this is uh, this has been a workhorse, man. Yeah. This has been a true true workhorse. About thirteen years. You're yeah, I mean, look that. look here, look at all this good stuff. I mean, we got gaff tape Hatched on up. it. Yeah, we we're, this thing has definitely uh, stood the test of time, no doubt Excellent. about it. Um, and then the backup to that fellow or gal is. This beaut. You may have seen some pictures with me and this guitar. I've used this many, many, many times. I remember, I don't know why I have this memory, but I remember sweating my butt off in Malaysia playing this guitar. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> some years back. Um, but yeah, this is another one. I haven't had this one quite as long. Okay. Um, I've had this for, I'm going to take a stab. I think it's maybe eight years or so, okay. but this has been still a, doing all right. Yeah, it's doing great. It's doing great. It's great. it's been a workhorse as you can as you can tell. It probably hasn't been played quite as much as that tobacco, yeah. but it's like it's been around the world with me many 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 Malaysia. many 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 times. <laughs> great. So yeah, so that's um oh, and then how how can we forget? How can we forget? <laughs> so that's a little bit different. What's the what's the pickup configuration in that? So this is like the Tremonti setup okay. in here, um, and this thing is a ripper. Yeah, I mean, the Tremonti it's, it's setup. It goes it goes with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just look at look at the top on that thing. That's an amazing top. Ten top, baby. Ten top. Ten top. Ten top. Nice. Yeah, I love I love the the translucent gray. That's amazing. It's the only one I've ever had like this. Um, but this this thing is a super killer guitar. 
I think the grey black thing was actually voted the most popular PRS finish of all time. So you're not, I think it is. Actually. You're not bad to have one of those around. Um, I re- actually, one of my one of my buddies, he called me a couple weeks ago and he was like, "Hey man, I'm thinking about buying this this uh, single cut PRS." Actually, he was going to get the half hollow body. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was like, "What do you think of it? It was this color." I was like, "Do it, get it, get it, yeah. pull the trigger." <laughs> he Great. Did, so he did it. Yeah. But yeah. Man, these are the all these guitars have been work workhorses, but that one I haven't had that one as long as these guys over here. This is the this is the core B rig team, nice. B team, B team. Um, Great, so, some good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Shall we uh, have a look at what you're playing through? What amps you're using? So we're having a bit of a chat about this. Absolutely, earlier, absolutely. So right now I'm using the Rivera Clubster 25. Ta-da! Um, and this is this is a great, great compact. Um, little unit. It packs a big punch for 25 watts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we use uh, we use this setup and we replaced a Kemper. Actually, we found uh, some years back that the Kemper helped with our cargo when we were shipping. It helped save on some costs uh, as far as getting stuff over the pond. Mm-hmm. And long story short, I did not love it. I'm not gonna lie. I know a lot of guys love it for studio. It's very and I can see heaviness. why yeah. they would love that. I, I understand the uh, the importance of a digital rig in a studio mm-hmm. now and being able to work quickly and efficiently. I get yeah. that. That's the but as far as playing live, I still love feeling a, mm-hmm. a real amp. I don't care who it is, who, who's trying to sell me on something. I can still tell a difference, no matter yeah. how great it is. And I've heard some amazing modelers. Oh, well, it's all coming amazing, along really well, isn't it? Amazing but, modelers. Yeah, it's not um, going to make up. The, the positive set. grid one is absolutely stunning. Yep. But, yeah, but compared to a real amp, it's close, but it is not a real amp. You don't get the same it's a mo- it's a, yeah. it's a mo- it is it, It's still a modeler. It's a great modeler, but it's still a modeler. Yeah. Um, okay. But this this is an amazing little unit. I, I was saying to you earlier, we have it set up so it's the rig is sort of divided into three tones. We have it set up in a uh, clean stage. We have a middle gain stage, and then we all we have a, a heavier gain stage. And that's the heavier gain stage is more for like the older Daughtry tunes. It's not over. Feels like tonight. Yep. Um, Home, maybe. Dep- <laughs> Home's, <laughs> believe it or not, there is a heavy guitar really? in there on the recording. Yeah, okay. not it, probably not super audible, yeah. but it is there. Um, but we use the the heavier tones for the older stuff, and then for all the new stuff, I use the middle gain mm-hmm. stage and fuzzy sounds for all yep. the new stuff. Um, but yeah, as far as the amps go, I love this thing. I couldn't vouch for it enough. It's an amazing unit. Um, if you guys like Rivera stuff, if you like compact gear. That you can carry anywhere. That's a great amp. Nice. Great, great amp. You want to you look at some pedals? Let's go have a look at some pedals. You've got a bit of thing for a Rivera, haven't we? So, talk us through this. Okay, so this is the new board that uh, Ryan uh, Ashurst, my tech, built. Uh, he's a bit of a genius, although he would never say that to you because he's a humble guy. But he is a bit of a genius. Well, unless you, you tell him to say it, obviously. <laughs> He'll never do it, though. He'll never do it. I guess that's what a humble guy does, though, right? Yeah. That's cool. Sign of a good It's tech. a good trait. Good Take trait. pride in his work. Um, but we're using, as the base for this board, we're using the Boss ES8, which mm-hmm. we replaced a GCX uh, okay. switcher. Uh, from my previous rack yep. um, with this, and it is... What brought you to that? We wanted to get away from the rack setup, okay. having everything detached from the mm-hmm. player. So when it was in the rack, all the gear was back there with the tech and not yeah. with me. I wanted to be able to control stuff on the fly, yeah. so I can, if there's a sound I need to tweak, I can get right down there on the floor Just and do it. it. Yeah. And rather than communicate it to a guy that maybe talks to a guy that maybe knows a guy, and maybe they'll have lunch, and maybe then the sound will get ch- changed. Yeah. <sighs> Not a huge fan of that yeah. that kind of setup. I like being able to, you know, make a, make a change as we see fit. And we and you talked about that earlier. I know you're a yeah. fan of the same thing. Um, but as far as the board is concerned, um, the S8 is the core of it, and we have it so it does multiple switches where it'll switch the channel of the amp. It'll do changes with the pedals. Yep. So I can set up a bank. I can set up a patch where it'll change a channel on the amp a lot, and it'll incorporate a, a delay into that. It'll incorporate yeah. a fuzz into that. Into this thing is highly sure. intellectual. Yeah. I don't know how to work any of that function, but Ryan sure does. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, as far as the tones on the board, I'm using, for 
the heavier stuff, I'm using the Rivera Metal Shaman. Um, we don't really use it in a metal capacity, but we do use, it's pretty, you know, it's chunky. It's pretty yep. chunky. Um, I think this thing was designed to go all the way up to Slayer, if need be. But we don't go. We don't go bit quite much. that far. That would be a bit much in this scenario. Yeah. Um, but that's the, we use that for the heavier tones. Okay. Um, I, this is the Rivera 3D Shaman, which is their chorus pedal. Mm -hmm. It is spectacular. I can't say enough great stuff about that chorus pedal. Very, 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 very high quality product and high quality sound as well. Right. Um, my buddy uh, Dave over at DLS uh, has so kindly hooked me up with the Roto Spin and the Tremolo pedal. Mm -hmm. Both of these are boutique high-end uh, product. Amazing, amazing stuff. I can't say enough good things about Dave's company. Um, he's an amazing, amazing technician. He's also an equally amazing guy. Um, if you guys have not checked out DLS Effects, go check them out. Seriously, great, great stuff. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have seen on other boards the Chase Bliss Tonal Recall. Yep. Um, they've also been kind enough to work with me. And this product, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that might be... I, I, I think it probably is the best delay on the market. I think it probably That's is. a bold statement. It is a bold statement. But I'm just going to throw that out there, <laughs> take, take, it, take, cool. take it with a grain of salt. But I, that, that's, my, uh, that's my take on it. I love that delay. That's a great one. Cool. And then my favorite fuzz pedal company out there, by a long shot, B-Tronics. If you guys aren't hip to them, get hip, because this is, this is the jam. So is that what a lot of the new stuff's it is using that for your fuzz? The whole album? Cage to Rattle record we recorded with this dude. And the Walk to Hell, which is their cra even crazier fuzz pedal. Okay. Uh, we used it. We, I mean, most of all the guitar, like, rhythm tracks were done with that, the Octahive. And then for cool. extra, you know, sriracha, we put on the, the Walk to Hell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked them out, they're a great, great company. So we've got, so far, three great companies I've talked to you about on here. Um, all high-quality um, audio and very rugged. Um, obviously... Obviously, I don't even need to say anything about the Dunlop 535Q nope. in Chrome. How cool does that look? Uh, it sounds equally amazing. Um, uh, we got the Ernie Ball volume, which is, you know, that's been around for years. Yeah. Staple, staple, staple. This dude might be one of my favorite pedals on the board. Um, it's a copy of the, the old 63 reverb tank mm -hmm. that you used to use in conjunction with your basement or whatever. Yep. And... Um, this pedal has a, it, the sound is very close to the original reverb tank, but I find it has a very um, uh, 50s Hitsville Motown kind of thing to it, and I love that. And I use that, if you guys have heard our new record, you'll hear that. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, I, I slathered that whole record with reverb, with that reverb, actually. Um, but it, it had to be on the board. There was no, no way around that. It, it's such a part of the sound. Yeah. Um, and then um, I've had that for a long time as well. So it's a bit of a, there's a bit of attachment to that. Pedal, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I've had that one for a while. I was I was telling uh, Liam here earlier this pedal. I think I bought my original one for seventy dollars or something like that. You know, probably eight nine years ago. And those those things are selling for I think I saw them uh, for like three hundred dollars or something like that recently. So they, they've gone up in value apparently. Keep hold of it. Um, as it were. Well, it's a great, it's a great pedal. I can understand why. Great. Um, and then the, the good old standby boss flanger, we use that for, um, I pretty much use that for one function. It's a great sounding pedal. I just don't have any need for it other than one function. And do you know yeah. what that function is? Class, do you know what that function is? That function is playing the clean part on Purple Rain. Uh, it's a beautiful, chimey. You need it. You can't yeah, live it's, amazing. It's, a, it's amazing. And it sounds very, very, very close to the tone that Prince used on right. the Purple Rain record. Although he didn't even use a he didn't use a flanger on that. He used a CE1, a chorus pedal. Uh, okay. It's just that this is the closest. This comes closer than a chorus pedal yeah. to my ear. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just got a nice watery effect to it. I remember we played a show recently. And one of my fellow songwriter buddies. He didn't know we did that cover, and he heard it. He was like, "Oh man, that sounded so awesome." He goes, "What was that effect you're using on the on the verses of Purple Rain?" I was like, "Oh, I was like, it's a Boss Flanger." He was like, "Ah, oh, I need to put that on all my songs." Now. I just need to slather it with the with the boss flanger. So excellent. Yeah, it's a testament. It's a testament. So yeah. yeah so I think that's the whole board. Um, yeah. It's uh, this accommodates pretty much every tone that I would need. Recording with this band, playing live with this band, between the guitars I have, 
and these pedals and those amps. I think I can get pretty much everything I need. Excellent. Let's not forget that Silver Sky, though. I don't have that in this rig, but I do have it. That thing, pristine, pristine. Can't say enough great stuff about it. There we go. (laughs) Yeah, controversial is a word. Yeah, uh, maybe a little. (laughs) No, that's good to hear. Maybe a little. From anyone who's had their hands on it, we've heard very, very, very few bad things about that guitar, so it it kind of puts a lot of skepticism to rest. It's such... Skeptic or not, it's a great guitar. It's a great, great guitar. It's very well made, and I can tell just by playing it, a lot of thought went into it, uh, the making of it. So such a high-quality product. Great, great job on the PRS end, and kudos to John for being part of the design team on that as well. Well, I hope if you're over here again soon, you'll bring that with you next time. I'm hoping so, too. (laughs) I'm hoping so, too. Excellent. Yep. I think that's just about it. Awesome. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us and walking yeah. us through all of this. Yeah, and man. Hope the rest Absolutely. of the tour goes really Yeah, well. let me know when it goes up and I'll I'll follow you guys on the old facer. Excellent. We'll look out, <laughs> we'll look out for you there. Awesome, man. Great. Thank Thanks, you, Brian. man. Appreciate it.